Guys, surgical anatomy of the parotid gland is very important topic for you in surgery. So, where is the parotid gland, guys? Here. So, it is a salivary gland. One of the largest looks like. And you have two of them on uh, either side of your uh, face, right? So, this uh, surgical anatomy is very important. Why? Why is why are they specifically talking you to about the surgical anatomy of the parotid gland? You know why? Because within the parotid gland passes your facial nerve. Look at this. So, how difficult it would be right to uh, work on the parotid gland why would you work on the parotid gland you want to do a parotidectomy and there could be some tumor here that you want to remove right uh, so basically if you damage the facial nerve what will happen guys the sensation of the face the nerve supply motors for supply to the face etc will reduce right bell's palsy can happen then uh, the person can have uh, la no lacrimation no salivation Sensation of taste can go away. Please uh, understand one thing that um, even temp uh, trigeminal nerve has this kind of branches, okay? Uh, but it is not within the uh, parotid gland. So you have to look at the surgical anatomy of parotid gland. Look at the uh, surface anatomy of the parotid duct. We are talking about the duct, okay? So from the tragus of the ear and they have above the angle of mouth and the ala of the nose. Between those two, they have taken a dot and they have joined this line and they have taken the middle one third of the a line so that will be the surgical anatomy of the parotid duct okay coming to the gland itself you have a superficial lobe and a deep lobe look at this basically who divides the parotid gland into superficial lobe and deep lobe it is the facial nerve itself okay so this they are calling as facio venous plane of patty okay anyways so uh, the deep lobe you can see here let's uh, look at the theory The deep lobe is wedged between the mastoid process and the styloid process, the ramus of the mandible and the medial pterygoid muscle. So it is wedged. So it's like it's wedged between what? The mastoid process, the styloid process, the ramus of the mandible and the medial pterygoid muscle. Look at this image here. Okay, this is deep, let's say, and this is superficial, let's say. Okay, deep, uh, here you have the mastoid process, styloid process, medial pterygoid muscle. Here you have the deep, deep parotid, okay, gland. Now coming to superficial. Superficial, what have they written about it? They have said that superficial lobe overlies the masseter and the mandible. <coughs> so where is that masseter? Masseter is here and the mandible. So it overlies the masseter and the mandible. So is it like over your mandible? It's over your mandible, is it? So if you look at this diagram here, you can understand that this is the parotid gland. It's kind of superficial only, right? And here you have the duct, parotid duct. Okay, and the masseter muscle they have marked here. So yes, it kind of overlies the masseter muscle and the mandible. So it's over all that. At least the superficial lobe, yes. <clears throat> Shall we move on guys? So we have looked at this. Now let's move on. They have explained more about the superficial lobe. Parotid gland surgical anatomy we are looking at. Superficial lobe also receives a duct from the accessory lobe which is in the region of zygomatic arch or zygomatic process. So there is a accessory lobe also, is it? There is an accessory lobe also. Then they are talking about this tension duct guys. So it where will it open? Up, uh, you had upper second molar tooth, okay. Remember upper second molar, just uh, touch up, okay. Up, you touch your upper dentition, upper second molar tooth. So somewhere there this tension duct will open, okay. Duct of parotid, that is the tension duct which is 2 to 3 millimeter in diameter, it receives tributaries from all of them, superficial, deep and accessory lobe. It passes through the buccinator muscle and opens in the mucosa of the cheek opposite the second molar tooth. Okay. So one thing we understood that there are three lobes. Accessory lobe also is there. Okay. And the duct, where will the stensin duct open? Opposite the second, upper second molar tooth. That only they have shown you here. The surface anatomy of parotid duct. Let's put it here. Okay. Then they are explaining the parotid gland. How it is? It is covered by true capsule. There is a true capsule. We will make that green because it is true, right? Which is a condensation of the fibrous stroma of the gland. So the stroma of the gland, fibrous stroma of the gland itself will condense and it will become true capsule. There is also a false capsule formed by parotid fascia which is a part of the deep cervical fascia. So, I am guessing that uh, this uh, false capsule is outside because it is a part of the deep cervical fascia. What do you say guys? 
So if this is the deep cervical fascia, this will form the false capsule, right? So what are they seeing here? The parotid gland is covered by true capsule which is a condensation of the fibrous stroma of the gland and false capsule formed by parotid fascia as it is a part of the deep cervical fascia. Okay. So it has true capsule and a false capsule. <clears throat> so we have looked at what in all so far. We have looked at that there are three lobes. They here they said it is divided by the facial nerve into superficial lobe and deep lobe. Nobody is disputing this, but there is also an accessory lobe which kind of drains into the superficial lobe itself. And um, then there is a duct, a parotid duct of Stenson, Stenson, parotid duct, yeah, duct of Stenson, which is having opening from all the three lobes. And where does it open? Opposite in uh, to the upper uh, second molar tooth, the mucosa of the cheek, which is opposite to this. Okay, then. Parotid gland uh, will have uh, true capsule and false capsule. False capsule is a part of the uh, deep cervical fascia. Now coming to facial nerve. This is what is important, right? Facial nerve, how is it going within this parotid gland? Within it, it is going, looks like. Okay, here they didn't put dotted lines. Actually, they should put dotted lines here. What do you see? Here they have put dotted nerve, so we'll uh, dotted line. So this is better. Let's go with this. Okay. See, this is not above, so you should not put uh, solid line. It's dotted line because it is below this uh, parotid structure or within. Okay. So basically, uh, facial nerve, the way it is divided, it is having five branches here. These are the terminal branches of facial nerve. Facial nerve has many branches within uh, uh, all this that you leave. Okay. We are looking at the terminal branches of the facial nerve. You have one, two, three, four, five. That is, you have 10 zebra bit my cat, right? 10 zebra, correct only, right? Bit my cat. Can you use that here? Look at this. Temporal nerve, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical. 10 zebra bit my cat. Say, what is this? You should know the full form. What is T? 10 zebra bit my cat. Cervical, mandibular, buccal, zygomatic, temporal, is it? So it's very important for you to know these. Okay. Then what they're saying here, it's not just a nerve. There's something else here called as the, uh, which is the retromandibular vein. Okay. The facial nerve along with this retromandibular uh, nerve will divide. This is the facio venous plane of pate. This will divide it into superficial and deep parotid gland. Okay. This plane is called as facio venous plane of pate. Now you understood what it is, right? Then after this, it is the facial nerve is giving five branches. And the way it is giving five branches is like this. See, one, two, three, four, five. It's like the foot, the goose foot. Okay, goose foot. So that's why it is called as pes anserinus. Pes anserinus. Okay, so that they have written here. See here, pes anserinus. So it is because it resembles the foot of goose. So that is why this word pes anserinus. Okay. Branches of the facial nerve and muscles supplied by them also they have given here. See? Temporal means it will go up only. So frontalis muscle. Zygomatic, orbicularis oculi. So your uh, eyelid closing is it. Then buccal, buccinator, orbicularis oris and uh, elevators of the lower lip. Buccal, okay. Mandibular, muscles of lower lip. Mandibular cervical is platys muscle. So guys, uh, when you are doing parotid surgery, you do wide exposure, okay? And then you ident identify the facial nerve and do uh, minimum, okay? Minimum uh, surgery for superficial parotidectomy. You always try to preserve the facial nerve unless there is a malignancy which is infiltrating into it, right? Then uh, you always try to preserve the facial nerve, okay? Even if it is a malignancy, they are saying, unless it is uh, infiltrated directly. If facial nerve is excised, then you will have to reconstruct immediately with a nerve graft. Okay? You will have to take some uh, nerve from somewhere else, like the greater auricular or the sural nerve, and then you will have to reconstruct immediately. So you pick up the nerve from elsewhere and do a graft. Okay? Always drain the cavity. They are saying this, that you have to drain the cavity. What will happen if you don't drain? Guys, look at this. The Stenson duct also has some relations. Okay. The Stenson duct they have shown here. Above it, you have three branches, right? Ten zebra and the upper buckle. Buckle in that upper buckle. Okay. Below the Stenson duct, you have the lower buckle and the, uh, what is this? Mandibular and the cervical. Okay. 
one more thing they are telling you here whenever you do parotidectomy it is possible that that, uh, that person will develop a freeze syndrome okay so what will happen the auricular temporal and the great auricular will join the sensate, sensory and the secretory motor will join okay and that can lead to freeze syndrome see how they are sweating sweating when when they are trying to eat isn't it so that's it guys in this video we have looked at the surgical anatomy of the parotid gland basically uh, the parotid gland has uh, a deep lobe a superficial lobe and an accessory lobe the deep and the superficial are separated by the facial nerve and the retromandibular vein so this is called as facio venous plane of patty okay and uh, the deep lobe is actually wedged between the mastoid process styloid process um, ramus of the mandible and the medial pterygoid muscle the superficial lobe lies over the uh, masseter and the mandible the accessory lobe actually opens into the superficial lobe again all these lobes together will open into the stenson's duct which opens where in the mucosa of the cheek opposite to the second the upper second molar tooth okay and the stenson's duct also you saw stenson duct will be like this above it you have the temporal uh, branch of the facial nerve zygomatic branch of the facial nerve and the upper buccal below it you have the lower buccal mandibular and cervical branches okay this is the stenson's duct okay uh, you know the stenson duct above and before below relationships you should know now the parotid gland has um, uh, some uh, capsules it has the true capsule which is a condensation of the fibrous stroma of the gland itself and then you have the false capsule which is formed by the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia then coming to the stenson's duct itself we have seen the surface anatomy surface anatomy uh, for the stenson's duct is uh, the tragus of the ear uh, you will uh, join a line uh, jo uh, you will make one dot here and one dot uh, between the uh, ala of the nose and the angle of the mouth then you will uh, join this line and the middle one third will give you the uh, stenson's duct uh, surface anatomy okay that is and then coming to a uh, main problem with fish, uh, parotid uh, gland is inside it goes the facial nerve and the way it divides is uh, like a, a, a leg of a goose okay so the foot of a goose that's why it's called as pes anserinus right so uh, facial nerve along with uh, this retromandibular vein only will form this facio venous plane which will divide the uh, gland into deep and superficial now uh, once this after this plane the uh, facial nerve is dividing like this so five branches you have 10 zebra bit my cat that is temporal uh, supplying the frontalis muscle etc zygomatic supplying the orbicularis oculi uh, buccal supplying the upper lip lower uh, mandibular supplying the lower lip cervical supplying the platysma okay buccal is actually lower lip and lower lip lower lip and lower lip okay buccinator lower lip lower lip okay guys so whenever you're doing parotid surgery make sure that you'll expose widely uh, adequately identify the facial nerve preserve the facial nerve whenever possible and then if nerve is excised then you have to reconstruct immediately by a nerve graft taken from the great auricular nerve or the sural nerve okay always drain the cavity so that's it about the surgical anatomy of parotid gland bye bye so if the parotid surgery is not done properly it can lead to bell's palsy and even free syndrome free syndrome is where you can see that when the person tries to eat right they are sweating because of the mixture of these two nerves auricular temporal and the great auricular